All right. This is a, an introduction to our next assignment, which is to shoot architectural man-made spaces, either exterior or interior, in a way that, that really engages the viewer by activating the space. And linear perspective is a good way to do that. I'm a particular fan of German photographers. There's a certain school in Dusseldorf called the Dusseldorf School that has really come to specialize in shooting in this very straightforward and technical way, often man-made structures, where the way you angle your camera and the way you fit the subject matter into the picture plane, of, into the natural frame of your camera, is the most exciting part of the art form. I'm going to try to find a few examples. So let's look at this example. New York City. I'm going to open this up in Photoshop so I can show some drawings of it. Sorry. And this is an example of angling your camera for a one-point perspective shot of the man-made world. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, in this photo, the camera is interested in, in getting you to focus on this woman at the bottom of this subway platform. And so the camera is placed at a slight angle, not exactly horizontal, right? And the subject matter is fairly vertical. And the bottom of that subject matter is parallel to the angle of the camera. So the camera is basically centered just like this. So you can throw, throw the rule of thirds like out the window for this photo and angle just like this to line up with the focal point they want to bring forward. Now this is a very different photo than this would be to just frame and focus on her. So instead, this uses what's called one-point perspective to make that simple focal point way more powerful. And how is that done? Well, you'll recognize one-point perspective because all the lines that are vertical are pretty close to a true vertical. even though this one's at a slight angle and is a little bit more dynamic than that. And the only lines that aren't in parallel verticals or horizontals, like all these steps are parallel horizontals, all the other lines are angling directly towards one vanishing point. like the railing here, the edges of the stairs, the shadows. Do you see all those diagonals pointing right to her? And that's done by intentionally finding that placement of the camera where everything vanishes into an internal vanishing point. It doesn't need to be in the middle of the frame. If we look at it in the natural world, that single vanishing point might be at the corner of the frame, like there, where all the diagonals, like all the sea foam of the coast, and the striations in the sand, and the waves, and then eventually the clouds, all point to this little figure that marks kind of the vanishing point of that shot. That's one point perspective. Or, 
another man-made structure looking at a telephone pole, but finding an angle that makes it a very charged and dramatic space. I can't tell you exactly how tall that telephone pole is or how long that space is, but I can see the entirety of the path contained in this one format, right? And you have tilted horizontals and tilted verticals that are all parallel, and anything that doesn't match those two is angled like all of the different um, cracks in this telephone pole angle towards a vanishing point. It really makes the space more dynamic. So that's what we call one-point perspective. And the vanishing point where everything that's not horizontal or vertical recedes is right here. There just happens to be a person there. Even if the person wasn't there, that space would be incredibly charged with importance. Even without the dramatic lighting. Here's another great example of a one-point perspective shot. Of this scholarly library. Now, what is hard about taking a shot that's one-point perspective? Well, the first thing that's difficult is trying to, to center your frame. The reason you're not allowed to crop on this assignment is that I want you as much as possible to really control the native picture frame of your camera. So this is a square format camera, maybe a Hasselblad camera. Where is the vanishing point? Well, we just follow all these diagonals. They're all going to go to the same place. And in this photo, it's all perfectly controlled. Everything's perfectly symmetrical. Everything lines up to right there. So that's our central vanishing point. So what's difficult about that is you have to line up your camera exactly on this axis. The other thing that's difficult is in order to make those diagonals as powerful as possible, all the other linear elements like all the verticals have to be truly vertical, have to be parallel with the edge of your picture plane, the frame of the camera. And all your horizontals have to be perfectly horizontal. And the only horizontals in this are at the base of these different structures. But just lining up these little uh, rope holders <laughs> and the shadows and, and everything. Bookshelves. Oh yeah, thank you. So you have a lot of horizontals in the bookshelves. And they all are perfectly horizontal. So they're not receding towards each other at all. So all of these are just showing us their face and are very clean and straightforward. And that makes this space the most charged space. It's also very dramatic. It's good for chase scenes in movies or the end of Star Wars when you're going down the, the trench of the Death Star. It's all shown in dramatic one-point perspective. You don't know when they'll get there, but you know they're going to get there and that there's a strong destination in mind. So that's the strength of one point. There are other types of perspective that matter as well. And this is actually an example of two-point perspective, but it's more about something else. But I'll show you what I mean. So this is actually using three types of perspective together. Perspective in art is anything that in two dimensions really charges the space with, with depth. So first of all, how do we know it's not
actually, sorry, not two point. <laughs> Uh, how do we know that there's one point perspective here? So this is one point with some others. You get the horizontal yeah, exactly. So if you have strong verticals, and even though they're subtle here, you have them. The verticals at the edges of all of these things on the table are all perfectly parallel. See those? And strong horizontals. So the strong horizontal of this table at the front and at the back and at the bottom. And if the only other diagonals are all going towards one vanishing point and the only other diagonals are the edge of the table here and these scars in the table. So it's a very subtle one point. these kind of linear cracks in the table surface, those all serve to make a one-point perspective space. But that's really subtle. What's really charging the space is what's called the stacked perspective, where you simply have some elements in the composition, like this guy, overlapping other elements, or this bottle overlapping that bottle. That really charges the space, too. So in photography, if you want to make the space more interesting and more engaged, try to overlap elements so that they're, they're overlapping each other's space. Like this bottle is overlapping him, and this, this bottle is overlapping his, his elbow. And this interrupts that line by overlapping it. It forces us to see these in space. Now let's find a very simple two-point perspective idea. This is one point again. But this photo, I love this photo, again from the Dusseldorf School. Just subtly different. This is a very clean, very controlled photo. You see how the object is centered so that there's pretty much exactly equal space from each edge of the picture plane. It has a horizon line that isn't dead center, even though the object is perfectly centered. The horizon line is a little down, but it's a horizontal. But that is the only horizontal we see. We do see, however, a whole lot of perfect verticals. Lots and lots of verticals. All of these, all perfectly parallel verticals. So if you have verticals, but no consistent parallel horizontals, like so, and if the diagonals that are left don't go to just one vanishing point, but instead go to two vanishing points, at different parts of the composition, usually off to the sides. See all these diagonals? They're all going to point to vanishing points outside of the picture plane. Then you have what's called two-point perspective, where you're looking at the corner of the thing instead of the face of the thing. And what this does is it really does a good job of showing you the actual measurements. You know, I really get a good sense of how tall and deep and wide this building is. And so it really sets it up as a solid three-dimensional object in the space. Even these lines here will go to that same vanishing point. And to plot that vanishing point, I would need to go outside of the picture plane. Like so. Take those diagonals and extend them further to see where they hit on the horizon. 